it's Fairy, and today I'm back with the continuation of a series that I started several years ago. I used to call it Cosplay Tips, but I don't think I like that name anymore. I'm tossing up between a few different names in my head, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to call it, but you guys will see what I decided on in the title of this very video. Today I wanted to cover one of the most asked questions I've ever received. Can you teach me how to sew? I have never ever answered this question because it's just so broad. If you have absolutely no idea how to sew and are just looking for somewhere to start, you might find that this question isn't very helpful since it's so non-specific. It's sort of like asking somebody to teach you an entirely new language, like where do you even start with that? So today I thought I would start off with a very basic introduction to sewing specifically for cosplay. I'll be covering basic sewing terminology, sewing machines, other materials you'll need, basic tips to get you started, and other additional resources outside of this video. I'm gonna try to leave timestamps either right here or in the description down below so that you guys can just skip ahead if you only want to know one certain thing or if you already know something and you can just skip past that. If you're brand new to sewing you might notice that experienced cosplayers can tend to throw around a lot of sewing lingo. There's so much to cover in this video so I'm not going to go into every single term you might hear but these are just a few very very basic terms for you if you know absolutely nothing about sewing or garment construction. A seam. This is where two pieces of fabric come together and this is what you sew together. Right side. This is the good or outer side of the fabric. If your fabric has a pattern or design, it's the side with the print on it. If not, fabrics may have a slight color or texture variation between the right and wrong side, and some don't have any real right side. Wrong side. The inside of your fabric, or the side that doesn't have a print. Again, some fabrics don't have a right or a wrong side, so in that case it's pretty much up to you. A finished edge. This is when the edge of the fabric is folded or hidden in some way so that the fabric doesn't fray and has a clean, professional looking edge. There are a lot of ways to finish an edge or a seam and I'll be covering that another time. Pattern. Something that shows you what shapes you need to cut out to make a garment. You can make your own or buy them from the store. Seam allowance. A little extra fabric added to allow space for you to sew your seam. If you don't add seam allowance, your project will come out way smaller than you thought it would. Standard seam allowance is usually between a quarter of an inch and five eighths of an inch. Most store-bought patterns use five eighths of an inch, and larger seam allowances are usually easier for beginners to use because there's more space for you to mess up. Now that we covered terminology, let's move into supplies. Sewing machines are really intimidating for a lot of beginners, and for good reason. They're expensive, complicated, and can sew really fast. But don't worry, you don't have to be scared of them. They're really useful tools. There are a ton of sewing machine brands out there, with my two favorites being Brother and Singer. When I was in apparel school, we used Janome and Juki machines, and I absolutely hated them. I found that I would have a lot of issues with them jamming and not working correctly. Of course, brand preference is completely up to you, but this was just my personal experience and opinion. If you just Google search beginner sewing machine, you can find a lot of affordable options on Amazon or in actual physical stores like JCPenney or Target, with a lot of them being under $100. If you can spring for it, I might recommend buying a machine that's between $100 and $200 because it may have a wider variety of stitches, it might be a lot more durable and more useful to you as you continue through your sewing journey. When you choose your machine, choose something in your price range, obviously, with a wide variety of stitches. When you're just starting out, you probably don't need a thousand dollar machine with a touch screen and programmable embroidery stitching. Instead, go for something that has at least a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. It might also be useful to look at the machine and see if it has a buttonhole function. Some machines come with what's called a four-step buttonhole, while usually the ones that are a little bit more expensive come with a one-step buttonhole. The one-step buttonhole is a little bit simpler to use, but again, they do usually come with the more expensive machines. The machine I have has a four-step buttonhole. If you're confused by that, don't worry about it. I'm going to be explaining buttons in a later video, so that's just something to keep in mind for now. You can also hand sew buttonholes, so it's not like a requirement that your machine has to have a super nice buttonhole maker, but again, just something to keep in mind. Personally, I use a Singer Talent sewing machine. I would say that this machine is best for beginner to intermediate sewers. It comes with a fair amount of stitches, but you won't find it sewing through super thick fabric or doing any sort of specialty stitching. It's worked for my needs for the past four years, and I don't plan on replacing it anytime soon. But when I first started cosplaying, I used my grandma's vintage sewing machine from the 1950s. It could only sew straight forward and straight backward, and it could not sew sleeves for crap. 
but it was something I had access to so I could learn on it despite how old it was and I didn't have to buy my own machine. This is something I would definitely recommend beginners to do is to ask around to friends and family to see if anybody has a sewing machine that you could borrow. It can be a really big investment to buy your own so it can be really nice to kind of get a feel for sewing on a machine without that monetary investment. It's really cold in here so I went ahead and turned my fish's tank back on. I'm so sorry if you hear buzzing in the background. That's his um, air pump pumping air into the filter in his tank so I'm super sorry if that's really distracting but let's just continue. Something I want to briefly touch on is overlockers, more commonly called sergers. I don't think overlockers are something you need as a beginner and I don't think that they're beginner friendly at all. You may hear people talking about surging seams and wonder what they're talking about so I decided I would just really briefly touch on this. This is my overlocker, it's a Brother 1034D. Overlockers have a much faster motor than the regular home sewing machine and they're also far more complicated to thread and maintain. The reason you would use one of these is because they finish off your edges in a professional looking way so that the fabric doesn't fray. Overlockers are definitely an investment and something you probably won't need for several years if ever. I just wanted to explain them so that everybody was on the same page. If you can't afford or don't have access to a sewing machine, hand sewing is definitely the way to go. And hand sewing is something I think every single cosplayer should have in their arsenal regardless. I find myself hand sewing at least one thing on almost every single project I do, whether it's a button or sewing an area that my sewing machine has a hard time sewing through because the fabric is so thick. It's much more slow and tedious than sewing by machine, but it's far more accessible and a lot more affordable. I'm not going to go into how exactly to hand sew today since there are already tons and tons of great tutorials on YouTube. Some stitches that I use often and find particularly useful are the whip stitch, the running stitch, the back stitch, and the blanket stitch. These are just a couple of the many many stitches you can do while hand sewing. Every stitch has a different function so don't be afraid to learn a lot of them. Aside from your sewing machine or your needle and thread, there are also a couple other basic things you might need while sewing. You will need fabric shears, pins, a measuring tape, an iron, and an ironing board, and if you have a sewing machine you will also need bobbins and a sewing machine maintenance kit. Bobbins and a maintenance kit will commonly come with your machine, but you can find them at a fabric store if yours didn't come with these things. You'll probably collect more and more sewing knickknacks through your years of sewing. I know I certainly have, but these are just the absolute basics to get you started. You can get by with just these things. Technically, you can get away with no iron too, but I do think it's important enough to mention here. If you can't afford an iron or don't have access to one, that's totally fine, but I do think that there's something you should get as soon as possible. So now you have your sewing machine and all your supplies and you're ready to start sewing. But just how do you use that big scary sewing machine? Thankfully, they look a lot scarier than they actually are. Step one is to thread the machine. Your machine should come with a manual showing how to thread it. If you're still confused, you can likely find a video of someone threading your specific machine on YouTube if you search something like how to thread singer talent, but instead with your sewing machine's model name. Most machines are threaded in basically the same way, so I can show you how mine goes. Now that you've sewed the top thread of your machine, you'll also need to make a bobbin. Again, this depends on the machine, but most of them are essentially the same. Check your machine's manual to see how to do it with yours. This is how mine is done. When winding a bobbin, don't try to guide the thread into place with your hands. Just let it go. Once your bobbin is made, you can thread it into your machine. I have a top-loading bobbin case on my machine, so this is how mine is threaded. Once again, this will depend on your own personal machine, so just look in the manual. I think this is something common with every single machine, um, so make sure to pull up your bobbin thread through the bottom of your machine. I'm not really sure how to explain that in better words, um, but make sure you pull up your bobbin thread so it's coming out of your machine like this. After that, you're ready to sew. I would start out on just scrap fabric to get used to your machine settings. You might need to adjust your stitch length. Mine goes from 4 to 1, with 4 being very long and 1 being very short. For normal sewing, I keep it around 2.5 to 2. If I'm using a buttonhole, I can switch it down to this very, very low setting of 0 so that it does a really tiny stitch, but you won't use this for normal sewing. Keep in mind your seam allowance if you're sewing a project. Most machines have markings on the metal plate below the presser foot to indicate where the edges of your fabric should line up depending on your seam allowance. If you're using a quarter inch seam allowance, your fabric should line up with your presser foot. If you're using a 5 8 seam allowance, it should line up with this line. When you start sewing, you need to first put the presser foot down. This keeps the fabric from lifting up with the needle while you sew. 
Once your fabric is all set, lightly press down on the pedal and sew forward slowly a couple stitches. Before you get too far, press the reverse button on your machine and sew backwards a few stitches. This tacks down the stitches so they don't unravel when you're done. I call this back stitching, but I've also heard it called back tracking or back tacking. Then you can go ahead and sew forward all the way down to the end of your seam. Don't forget to back stitch at the end too. When you're done, lift your project from the machine and snip off all the thread tails. Congratulations, you just sewed your first seam! Outside of this video, there are tons and tons of sewing resources for you to find and use. If you are able to, I would highly recommend taking a sewing class. You can do this either at a community college, in high school, or even at a fabric store. I took two in high school, and like I said, I did go to college for apparel for a little while, and I learned a lot in these classes. They teach you the proper or like by the book way of sewing, so if you have any prior um, self-taught experience, you might find it a little bit frustrating since they'll probably be reteaching you things that you already know in a different way. Books are so, so useful. I don't have it with me right now, um, but for apparel class I was required to buy the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing. This is basically like the Bible of sewing. It has pretty much everything you would ever need to know in it. I was able to get this used off of Amazon and it was practically like new for just a couple of dollars. I think I paid maybe four or five dollars for it, so I would definitely recommend picking this up. Various cosplayers have also come out with books about sewing and also armor making. I know Kamui Cosplay does a lot of armor and LED books, but I do know that she also has a cosplay sewing book, so I can link her website down below for you guys to check out too. She's an extremely reputable cosplayer, and I look up to her quite a lot. When I was first learning how to sew back in 2013, my number one resource was YouTube. People post a lot of tutorials online, so chances are you can find what you're looking for with just a quick search. That might be how you ended up on this video. I learned how to draft patterns and sew buttons and zippers this way. You can also find cosplay and sewing work logs on YouTube, and while these aren't like tutorials, I can I still find it very helpful to like watch somebody's entire creative process and kind of look inside their brain and see how they're figuring out how to make something. I've also learned a lot of useful skills from videos like that too, even though like I said it's not technically a tutorial. Finally, there are blogs! There are so many blogs! So many blogs. If you can't find what you need on YouTube, give it a quick Google search. Chances are a ton of different people's blogs will pop up and you can find a really detailed blog post about a specific sewing technique. In the past, I've used a uh, blog post to learn about sewing puff sleeves and also petticoats. One of my favorite bloggers is Angela Clayton. She doesn't do cosplay, but she does do historical costumes and she's extremely talented. If you're looking to do something more historical, I guess, maybe like a really fitted bodice, a long skirt or a petticoat, hoop skirts, um, you can probably find resources on her blog. In the end, the best way to get better at sewing is to practice! Before you start your first cosplay, I would recommend looking for a beginner sewing project like making a pillow or a simple plush. Then you can go ahead and dive into your first beginner-friendly cosplay. I'm gonna talk about choosing cosplays in a different video, probably, but um, if you're looking for your first cosplay, I would stick with something simpler. One of the first projects I made when I was starting out was Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica, and this was an awful beginner project. It was really hard to pattern and get everything to lay right, but the first cosplay I ever actually did was Len Kagamine from Vocaloid. I didn't sew the whole thing myself, I basically made like the arm sleeves, the belts, the little arm cuffs, and that was a really good beginner project. When you're just starting out, it's really important to know your skill level. I know a lot of people want to branch out really fast and do a lot of really fun and big cosplays, but you have to build your skill set before you can make that ball gown. If you have any questions at all or any requests for future episodes of this, please let me know down below. I have a ton of ideas floating around for future cosplay videos, but in the end, I'm not a beginner and I don't know what beginners need, so please let me know what you guys would like to see down below. It does not have to be sewing related, I'm planning on doing some cosplay makeup stuff, things about wigs, um, convention packing, conventions, vlogging, all kinds of stuff, so please let me know what you guys would like to see. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!